I was only 10 years old that year and my parents worked far away, so I had to stay at my grandmother's house for a while. My grandfather passed away a few years ago, so she lived alone. When she heard that I was coming to stay, my grandmother was very happy. She loved me very much and took good care of me, but I was a very rude child. I frankly disparaged the food she cooked because it was not delicious. I was also very harsh on a few other things that made her very sad. Looking back on that period in my life, that was in the countryside and was quite interesting. After dinner, I and a few neighborhood kids played around. My grandmother and her friends would sit and chat while watching us. That evening, my grandmother needed to take some things to my aunt. She told me to come home earlier and look after her house. But she was gone for a long time, about two to three hours, and it was getting dark outside. The children who played with me all had to go back home to go to bed already, leaving only myself and a few older people sitting around. There was no one to play with, so I went back home. Since I was home alone, I decided to close every door. When I finished, I waited all by myself. After waiting for my grandmother for a while, I started getting tired and fell asleep. It was about 9 o'clock in the evening and she still hadn't come home yet. As I fell asleep, I started to hear noises inside of the house. I heard someone walking around, but the footsteps were very light. At first I thought my grandmother might have been back, and that's when I woke up and I thought again that something might have been wrong because her footsteps was not light at all. I wondered if it was a thief and I was thinking about what to do next when I heard a man call someone else's name. This person's voice sounded very sad and the last syllable was still lingering from afar and near, making me shiver. The man came out of the kitchen and his legs were hovering in the air. He suddenly lifted the curtain as I was scared to death. The figure of the older man with eyes bulging, his dry smile and hideous whisper still haunts me to this day. I was so scared that I buried my head in the blanket to hide and I cried without a sound, scared, clenching my fists and whispering to my grandmother to come back soon. Even so, I could still sense that the ghost was doing something. He seemed to be wandering around the house, calling out someone's name and searching for things. Then seemingly finding nothing, he slowly returned to the kitchen. I don't know where I got the courage from, but as soon as I heard silence, I decided to open the window and get out of there. As I walked out the door, I dared to cry. And as I ran, I cried and cried for my life. Unfortunately, my grandmother had not yet returned. She was probably still spending time with people nearby. Seeing me crying like that, the ladies in the street immediately asked me what happened. I panicked and told everyone what happened. The information I gave them confused all of them. One of the men in the neighborhood picked up some sticks and went to my grandmother's house. He searched everywhere with his friends, looking inside and outside, but not seeing anything strange like I did. A neighbor asked me again if the door was closed or not, and how could outsiders get in if it was? And even if they did, they couldn't get out so quickly. They asked me if I'm sure I wasn't dreaming. I knew I wasn't dreaming, and I assured them that the ghost was looking for someone named Bella. The neighbors told me that Bella was the name of my grandmother. This I did not know. The lady next door kept asking me what the eccentric man was looking for in my grandmother's house. She and a few others found it a bit strange. Seeing me alone was also not good, so a few people stayed with me to wait for my grandmother to return. After a while, my uncle appeared. He took me to the hospital to see my grandmother because while she was away she had a heart attack and had to be hospitalized for urgent treatment. 
On the way, I was very nervous. At the hospital, I quickly ran to the room where she was lying. My grandmother's health had stabilized. I told her what happened at their house, and everyone was stunned, not knowing if it was an omen, because at the time the strange man appeared to me. That was exactly the same time my grandmother was receiving emergency heart treatment. <laughs>